The latest national survey into otters in England shows a five-fold increase in numbers since the 1970s, when river pollution and depletion of their habitat threatened to remove them from the English countryside. The survey was written by the Environment Agency in association with the Wildlife Trust's Otters and Rivers Project and Water UK. Now the survey is good news for otters and everyone interested in British wildlife. The return of the top predator to the Thames marks success for the Environment Agency in association with the Wildlife Trust to encourage the reintroduction of the native species to the English countryside. While otter sightings are up in Oxfordshire, much more has to be done to recreate habitats suitable for the otters to lay up if they are to continue spreading back into central England from the West Country and Wales. The continuing success story for otters will depend on the agencies and landowners reaching a balance between the river and land use and the re-establishment of otter-friendly habitats. Timothy the tortoise, thought to be Britain's oldest resident, died aged around 160. And for more than a century he lived a life of comfort and privilege at Paddingham Castle on the River Exe near Exeter in Devon as the favoured pet of the Earls of Devon. After uncertain beginnings, Timothy lived off a diet of lettuce and strawberry leaves and is rumoured once to have become drunk on azalea blossom having to be doused with castor oil. But it was not always a life of wine and roses. During the Second World War, he moved from the wisteria bed and dug his own air raid shelter under the terrace steps. Before coming to the Courtenay family in 1892, Timothy was a ship's mascot. A naval historian, Captain George Cardew, has established that by then he was almost 40 and had seen active service with Captain John Guy Courtney Everard, who in true Timothy style was 101 upon his death in 1931. On his underside, he bore the family motto, where have I fallen, what have I done? And the answer was into good hands and quite a lot for such a long life. He was buried at a family funeral in the grounds of Paddingham Castle. Kenyan wildlife authorities are struggling to understand how a baby zebra they noticed in a game park was born without the normal black and white stripes. The zebra was found at a park near the capital Nairobi and officials said wildlife experts would carry deeper studies to understand the reason it was born white. They say it can only be associated with some pigment issues, but because they don't understand why it would not have normal ordinary stripes, they really can't be sure at this stage. The little white zebra hopped and pranced around its herd, pushing its pink snout under its mother's belly to suckle like any newborn zebra, oblivious of its dissimilarity. The park said they would not separate the little one from its herd and hoped that it would grow into full maturity. Zebras are wild herbivores that resemble donkeys. These baby ostriches born at a Berlin Zoo made their first television appearance at the tender age of two weeks.
Ostrich brothers Leanne and Patricia together laid a total of 36 eggs and four babies hatched out. The eggs were incubated by both the mother's and the baby's father, Gunther, for some 42 days. The contents of one ostrich egg are equivalent to 25 to 30 chicken eggs. The American Ostrich Association, formed in 1987 to support a U.S. industry, is a trade association with goals of educating producers and to promote ostrich products. And with the temperature reaching 33 degrees Celsius in Berlin, even the ostriches used to heat enjoyed a cool shower that the zookeepers had installed for them. The ostrich grows to a height of 7 to 8 feet and weighs 250 to 400 pounds when fully matured. An ostrich will live to be up to 50 to 75 years old. Gopala the monkey was abandoned by his mother, who had been raised in captivity at the World of Birds, a sanctuary for injured birds and primates in Cape Town. Soon after his birth, Gopal's mother threw her son on the ground and covered his mouth with her paws to stifle his screams of pain. But Gopal's mother isn't murderous. She is a patas monkey, raised in captivity. Unlike other monkeys in the wild who were taught by the females in their troop how to raise their offspring, this monkey from Central Africa had never learnt how to raise her offspring. She lacks the natural instinct to chew off her baby's umbilical cord and remove the afterbirth. The abandoned Gopal, trying to crawl back to his mother, would hook his umbilical cord onto branches in their enclosure causing him excruciating pain. Yusuf Sambo, primate curator at the World of Birds, became Gopal's foster father when he rescued the infant from its pen. After two hours in the incubator, Gopal was saved from the brink of death. When Yusuf took Gopal to the Patas monkey enclosure, his mother recognized Yusuf as the one who took away her baby. Head curator Claire Lau, Gopal's foster mother, was surprised when the mother snarled and bared her fangs at Yusuf, trying to get to her baby through the glass enclosure. Judging by her behaviour, Claire and Yusuf hope she will overcome her fear of raising her baby so that mother and son can be reunited. None of the 40 primates cared for at the sanctuary can be returned to the wild since they were all hand-reared as pets. But as caged animals, they become aggressive as they grow older, and the owners want to rid themselves of the menace they once cuddled and coddled as cute creatures. Meet Zeus. At an estimated value of 100,000 pounds sterling, this mini leopard is the most expensive kitten in the world. A new hybrid of leopard and house cat, Zeus is the closest thing to a domesticated wild leopard Britain has seen. Bred by cat fans Lord Esmond Gay and his partner Sarah, Zeus lives in the couple's home in Britain's Bedfordshire. At five months, Zeus has secured his place in the family he sleeps on Esmond and Sarah's bed, plays around with their daughter, and even goes in the car when the family is out and about. But the person he's closest to is Gay's fiancée, Sarah. 
Zeus took to Sarah when Gay had to go away for a few weeks. Ever since then, Gay has been virtually ignored by Zeus. Having a 90% wild-blooded animal around their daughter is also no concern to Gay. Gay spent more than £250,000 on creating little Zeus and his other Bengals may probably have cost him the same. But Gay is not set on earning much money with the animals. Although he sells his Bengals to celebrities all over the world, such as Hollywood actor Kevin Bacon or the Sultan of Brunei, he is very careful to whom he sells his beloved feline children. And the same applies for Zeus. Esmond Gay and Sarah actually never intended to breed Bengals. Gay was originally trained in computer technology, but he began to discover his interest for the wild cats. Now he has around 40 Bengals, which he breeds in a complex in Husband Crawley. Bengals are a blend of Asian leopard cat and a domestic cat. In 1991, the first exemplar was reared in Britain. Gay's kittens are often seen on TV, in animal magazines and newspapers. The prices for his conventional Bengals start from around 400 pounds. They reach 15 pounds, and after an initial 100,000 pound outlay, they're happy to eat tinned cat food. These two rare and endangered Chinese tiger cubs left Hong Kong bound for South Africa where they will learn survival skills for a life back in the wild. It was a 12,000 kilometer journey to South Africa and part of a bid to bring the endangered animals back from the brink of extinction. A pair of South China tigers named Cathay and Hope made their way from a cramped enclosure at Shanghai Zoo to a 500 hectare reserve in South Africa. The animals transited through Hong Kong's airport with a celebrity escort in the shape of Malaysian actress Michelle Yeoh. The Chinese government says less than 30 South China tigers live in the wild and another 60 live in zoos. Tigers are disappearing because of the destruction of their natural habitat in densely populated southern China and as demand for products that are believed to enhance sexual potency encourage hunting. After completion of the 12,000 kilometer journey to South Africa, the two tigers arrived in the National Zoological Gardens of South Africa. When the cage doors were opened, they bolted quickly into a large enclosure where they will spend a few weeks before they're taken to the reserve where their hunting skills will be honed. The animals will be taught on a 500 hectare facility how to hunt impala, a graceful African antelope, and warthog, which are good stand-ins for the deer, and wild boar found back in China's dwindling forests. Male Chinese tigers can grow to 175 kilograms, not big by tiger standards, but big enough to send shivers down the spine of an impala. Village Mahawa, close to the Indo-Pakistan border in northern Punjab state, has devised a novel way to prevent their cattle from becoming victims of landmines. Baba Chinda Singh, a resident of the village, took the initiative of constructing a cow shelter complete with food and water for cows and other cattle. The shelter not only takes care of stray cows, but also provides medical treatment to those injured in landmine blasts. Two veterinarians visit the ailing animals daily.
Singh opened the shelter because he believed that the animals were living beings created by God just like everyone else. Since the construction of the shelter, only three cows have fallen victims to landmines spread in the fields. At present, the shelter takes care of more than 400 cows and has a stock of around 400 trolleys of fodder donated by supporters in nearby villages. The residents of the village say the shelter has provided the much needed help and has rid the land of rotting carcasses of cows who stood on the mines and were left to decompose where they died. The Indian Army laid thousands of landmines in about 356 acres of land around the village after tensions grew with Pakistan following an attack on the Indian Parliament in 2001. It's not the kind of creature most people would want to share their bed with. But a 10-year-old boy in Thailand has found he sleeps better with his pet crocodile by his side. His friends have pet dogs, pet cats, even pet rats. But Watana Tongon shares his home with a more dangerous kind of animal. This is his pet crocodile, King who he found in a pond near his home north of Bangkok. Little did he know that the cute freshwater croc would grow to weigh 40 kilograms and measure more than one meter long. It's not easy taking care of the prehistoric beast. King needs to be washed, his teeth brushed before bed, and there's also the task of feeding him. His father Preyun says the key to making King happy is to play with him twice a day. Unlike most crocodiles, King can't swim. Preyun says he did try to teach the animal to swim a few times in a nearby canal but King gave up after swallowing a few gallons of water. What the crocodile prefers to do is watch television in the evening with his owners and their pet dogs. Thailand's Nation newspaper quoted wildlife officials as expressing concern over keeping crocodiles as pets saying they could become aggressive during mating season or when hungry. A woman was killed after jumping into a pool full of crocodiles in front of scores of horrified tourists at a wildlife park near Bangkok. She was swarmed by scores of the animals and park workers were able to retrieve her body only after about 20 minutes. Authorities determined it was a suicide attempt. A monkey in a suburb of Kenya's capital city, Nairobi, is going against nature by adopting kittens, sadly with fatal results. Three times the monkey has carried the kittens as she would baby monkeys, but twice the felines have died from their lack of real mother's milk. Sitting on this rooftop in an Nairobi suburb, a monkey delouses the baby cradled in her arms. But this baby is different. It's a kitten. Frail from hunger and cold, the dying white kitten lies limp in the monkey's arms. Its new mother will not let anyone near to feed it. Residents passing in the street below 
pay scant attention to the unusual scene that has attracted a great deal of outside interest. The monkey has been roaming the neighborhood for the past 18 months, snatching unattended kittens. This is the third time it is adopting a kitten. One resident, Mr. Gichuru Mawangi, says that the cat population in the area is under threat from the monkey. Swinging from the monkey's mouth, the frail kitten meows piteously as the monkey jumps onto a different roof. The monkey accepts gifts of bananas from residents, but has made no attempt to feed the kitten, which is dying slowly without its mother's milk. The monkey's behavior is unusual, but not unheard of in the animal world. A lioness in one of Kenya's game parks has repeatedly adopted oryx calves, normally taken not to nurture, but to eat. There comes a time in a youngster's life when baby teeth fall out or are pulled out, leaving space for strong new teeth to grow. And for four-month-old lion cub Hoy, that time came when vets removed an infected tooth from his gum at Kiao Kiao Zoo in Chonburi, 80 kilometers east of Bangkok. This young lion had been suffering from a major toothache for days, his keepers wondering why the healthy cat had turned off his food. The task of removing the rotten tooth was undertaken by several members of staff, with Hoy put under anaesthetic as vet Wanchi Tatwanana operated on the gum. Kiao Kiao Zoo is home to several lions and staff recently celebrated the birth of three new cubs. The adult lions were originally brought into Thailand through an animal exchange program with a zoo in Israel. And it seems adults and babies are more than happy with their home in Southeast Asia.